Broncos country came in clutch as we talk about the end of the 2023 NFL season. Broncos country voted on position awards like Offensive Player of the Year, Defensive Player of the Year, Most Improved Player as well. We're going to break it all down and share your results here on today's brand new episode, Locked on Broncos. You are Locked on Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. The Broncos season is over, but the accolades continue to roll in as Broncos country shared their opinions on who they felt like should be the team's most important players. Obviously, in terms of offensive player of the year, defensive player of the year, we'll break it all down in today's brand new episode of Locked On Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Just a reminder, Broncos country, you can get this show for free on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast every single day, all year long, because for the true fan, there is never an off season. A special shout out to all the everydayers out there. Those of you who make us your first listen of the day every single day, we appreciate you. I'm Cody Rourke, Broncos reporter from Mile High Sports, joined as always by Sarah Bettinger, site expert, predominantly orange.com here. And look, we always like to get Broncos country involved in the show. I mean, so much of what this show is, is because of the avid listeners and watchers in Broncos country. They make the show exactly what it is. And without this show, I mean, without you, you guys, the show wouldn't be possible. I got twisted up there. It wouldn't be possible without your interaction, your comments that we get. It means a lot. Like, we've got a really great community of people here in Broncos country. So, Sarah, we open it up in a Google form. We put it out on social media and a lot. We got over 1,200 responses on it in terms of votes here for, uh, you know, some of these end-of-the-season awards. And I can't wait to share them here with Broncos country. So, first category that is up. Broncos Offensive Player of the Year. Really, there were three guys that took home a majority of the votes here for Denver. But this one, honestly, wasn't even close to begin with. Cortland Sutton taking home the honors as Broncos Country's Offensive Player of the Year for 2023. Very exciting season from Cortland Sutton. Obviously, everybody wanting to see him rebound and get back to anything close to what we saw in 2019, right? When he was so dominant out there and Broncos were shuffling quarterbacks left and right, Joe Flacco, Brandon Allen, Drew Locke. I mean, Cortland Sutton made the Pro Bowl that season for the Broncos. Very, very impressive. But I would say, and I would argue that this was even more impressive of a year from Cortland Sutton. I mean, he, he set a personal best with 10 touchdowns, I believe he was the first since Demarius Thomas to get double-digit touchdown receptions in a season. So it's been a while since the Broncos had this kind of production. And you might look at the rest of his numbers and say, well, hey, 770-some receiving yards. I mean, that's not, that's not great, right? I mean, that's not much. But when you look at the efficiency when Cortland Sutton was targeted, Cody, I think it paints the real picture of just how dominant he was this season. A quarterback rating when targeted of 120.2. Now, if a quarterback finished the season with 120.2 QB rating, that guy's probably winning MVP. So let's just put it this way. You throw Cortland Sutton the ball, your quarterback's looking basically like an MVP, right? And he's making them look like an MVP. He's making impossible plays. He came up with so many clutch catches for the Broncos, not to mention, I mean, how many pass interference penalties did he draw? How many big blocks did he make? I mean, He's just such a great all-around player, and it was awesome to see him rebound this season after a couple of struggles since that injury really early in 2020 back against the Pittsburgh Steelers. One of my favorite moments from Cortland this season, look, obviously I think everyone's going to say the, the getting the two feet in against Buffalo. That We actually put a response out there in terms of the survey that we put out where we asked Broncos country their favorite moment. That moment, it was hard to filter through 1,200 responses, Sarah, but a good portion of them, and I'll just give the gist of it. I saw so many about Cortland's catch against Buffalo. I saw the Broncos beating the Chiefs and snapping the win streak as the top moment. Really, that's where it was. And then the five-game win streak obviously got some recognition there for Denver. And then some people did say that they were happy, like their best moment of the season was when the season ended. So, I mean, there's still some grouchy people out there, unfortunately, <laughs> yeah. here in Broncos country. But overall, you're, I mean, you're right. Like Cortland Sutton – came up with big plays and big moments like Denver doesn't win that Buffalo game. If he doesn't get those, you know, tippy toes in the way that he did. I mean, the, the catch he had the one hander against the Los Angeles Chargers. One of my favorite moments from Cortland this past season was when he caught that pass. I think it was one handed against Legereus Sneed and drew the pass interference call at the same exact time, completely mossed him. That was one of my favorite moments here. And I'm optimistic. Look, we don't know what the future is going to hold. I know people were looking at the Cortland Sutton's Instagram post and saying, Hey, 
this means like, is he leaving? Like, no, Cortland is just preparing for whatever, because look, every for the last two years, Cortland's name has been thrown out there in trade rumors. It's been thrown out there and like, hey, the team could deal him. I honestly don't believe that Sean Payton is going to get rid of Cortland Sutton, but Cortland's putting it out there. Like, hey, left it all on the field here in 2023. Regardless of what happens, there's a plan in place, whether it's here, whether it's elsewhere, I can tell you that. So don't look too much into it. Broncos country and everyone likes to look at the Instagram post and like, oh my gosh, he said this. Not too crazy there. But here's where the landslide was, right? 64.9% of the voters in Broncos country selected Cortland Sutton as the team's offensive player of the year. Really no argument here. But 29.7% voted for right guard Quinn Miners as a team's offensive player of the year. I mean, I want to get your thoughts on this. I think Quinn was if you had to take a guy who wasn't a skill player and say, okay, this is the best player on the Broncos offense, I would say Quinn Miners by a landslide as well, not a guy who goes out there and catches passes. I'm curious for your thoughts on what Broncos country had here for the second place voter here in Offensive Player of the Year for Denver. I like this pick. I really do. I mean, Quinn Miners deserves a ton of recognition. He kind of got named, I think, by a number of people outside of Broncos media, some national media folks calling him the best guard in football, in which case, man, maybe he is the best offensive player on the Denver Broncos, right? I mean, position for position. I mean, you can't necessarily take, well, this position's more important, or this guy actually made catches while this other guy was just blocking. You know, we didn't really get to see the impact that he made in terms of statistical production, things like that. But Quinn Miner's impact obviously goes well beyond that. And I think we saw last year when he was injured for a little bit, Cody, just the impact that he does make on the field for this team. I mean, without him, it's it's tough sledding. So great mm -hmm. to have Quinn Miners on this roster in general. But man, to see how he has emerged coming from, remember when he came out of college, it was a, what is that, D3 school or something like that. And mm -hmm. obviously didn't even play in 2020 because their season was canceled due to the pandemic. And then he comes into the NFL and is basically an instant starter Despite all that, it's just crazy to me the the ascent that he's had, and and as unprecedented as it is, you know we've come to expect greatness out of him. So I think he's a great choice, first or second place on this list. I think he's a good pick. You know, it's it's crazy to think like for for a guy like Quinn being in the situation, obviously with the pandemic, missing out on another, being able to play a season. We all saw the workout videos of him punching the trees, right, doing his steps. But the thing that got him recognition in the NFL or in the NFL draft process was his performance at the senior bowl. I mean, Sarah, he's, he's a guy that everyone's like, Oh, this guy played D three, but he's going against like Derek Brown and he, he's winning one-on-ones against Derek Brown. And people are like, wait, all of a sudden, who's this Quinn Myers guy? Like he was the one guy that came out of that year's draft class. Everyone on the senior bowl is like, Hey, Quinn Myers, Wisconsin, Whitewater, keep an eye on this guy. And man, what a steal in my opinion for George Payton. I mean, George got, Quinn, he got Baron Browning in round three. Like, we're talking of great value picks here, no pun intended for the Broncos. Quinn has absolutely ascended, and I'm very, very excited to see where his growth continues to take him. And then 5.4% of the voters voted for Russell Wilson as a team's offensive player of the year. Now, I think when you look at the touchdown to interception ratio, you look at overall touchdowns accounted for, there's a valid argument to be had there about Russ being in consideration. But when we talk about biggest impact, well, I mean, you can even make this with Russ because it didn't look that great with Stidham in the, the two games that Russ didn't play. But Cortland was obviously the one guy that made the most plays, was probably the most dangerous guy on the field here for Denver offensively. So Broncos country, I thought you voted well in this, and you continued your votes because we're going to jump into the defensive player of the year voting as voted on by you, the avid listeners of Locked On Broncos, everybody here in Broncos country. You're going to get all that here on today's brand new episode of the show. This show is brought to you by BetterHelp. And sometimes we all need the opportunity to get something off of our chest, whether it's big or small. Certain things can really start to get to you, and it's important to let that out, especially to someone who's unbiased on your life. So today, I want to say how I really feel about something. You might even be thinking about the same thing this week. I think therapy is super important. And in today's society, often at times, we are encouraged to not talk about our problems. We're not, you know, we're encouraged to not talk about the things that are bothering us. I'm encouraging you to talk about the things that are bothering you because I found tremendous benefit in utilizing therapy. I do it once a month and I've utilized BetterHelp in the past. And one thing I really loved about BetterHelp is it was super convenient to my schedule. I just started my new career here in Denver as a beat reporter and trying to figure out the transition of how to fit in being a small fish in a big pond. 
there was some anxiety that came with that. And my therapist at BetterHelp helped me really ma manage and navigate my thoughts and my feelings that I had on a lot of things going on in my personal life. So make sure you check it out. Therapy can be different for everyone. And most of us have bigger problems than our favorite sports team. And it's important to get things off your chest every once in a while. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online. It's designed to be flexible and suited to your schedule. Visit BetterHelp.com slash locked on to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash locked on. We talked about the best offensive players this past season for the Denver Broncos, but what about on the defensive side? You might be able to guess who the fans voted, who you voted as the top guy, but Maybe some interesting other candidates actually receiving some votes here, Cody. Sometimes in an MVP race, the guys that just receive votes are the most intriguing. We're going to discuss all of the players that did receive votes for the best defensive player on the Broncos roster. But I want to say thank you to every single one of you that makes Locked On Broncos your first listen of the day. Every single day right here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Free and available everywhere that you listen to podcasts. Cody and I can't tell you enough how much we appreciate you bringing us on your commute to or from work, bringing us on the treadmill, through the grocery store, however you choose to listen, or if you watch on YouTube, we appreciate every single one of you for making us part of your day every day right here on Lockdown Broncos. So the best defensive players on the Denver Broncos roster, Cody, I think really no surprise at the top. But like I said, the surprise really came with guys that received votes all across the board in this category. But let's break it down. Let's start with the winner and, and Pat Sertan, who is undoubtedly the best defensive player on this team. I think, Cody, the fans have spoken pretty clearly with what we see from the voting here. But at the same time, not as much of a, a, a percentage as Cortland Sutton got on the offensive side. Yeah, I mean, PS2 taking home 40.5% of the votes out of 1,200 votes from Broncos country. Pretty dang impressive there. I mean, our, the thing that... I think drives me nuts about the conversation about PS2, Sarah, is I think so many people are like, well, they only had one interception. Like, okay, what does that mean though, right? How often are teams thrown to him? And look, there were some games where teams did throw at him. They threw the back shoulder. They targeted him. It happens. But I think the expectation is that, oh, he's got to have like seven or eight interceptions. It's not like Deron Bland. Like Deron Bland had a lot of interceptions this season, but you know he almost gave up probably well over past 500 yards receiving this season as well. Like there were times he also got cooked. And being ultra aggressive is that style of play. But the way that Denver's defense is, that doesn't necessarily have to play so aggressive. And I don't think that's where the design of the defense is supposed to be. Like there's times where he's playing press. There's times he's playing zone defense. And I think a lot of people don't know when they're watching the game, if a guy's playing man or if a guy's playing zone, they just think like, oh, this guy caught a slant. That's on Patrick Sertan. It's his fault. Like there's a lot of conversation about that. But when you talk to players in that locker room and you look at how people view him, you look at how his peers, I mean, NFL, PA, all pro vote, players, wide receivers that Pat covered and went against voted for him as the NFL's first team all pro alongside Deron Bland of the Dallas Cowboys. And so that's a lot of good recognition there. And obviously, he's probably one of the more valuable pieces here for Denver. I mean, we were just talking about it a couple of weeks ago in the final game of the season that Man, the Broncos really struggling in pass coverage opposite of Sertan in this game against the Raiders. And then all of a sudden you had conversation about people wanting to trade Sertan. It's like, okay, well then who's going to cover anybody for the Broncos going forward? I think Pat is an unbelievable player. Yeah, look, you're going to have your ebbs and flows. You're going to have moments where you know, you're going to get thrown out sometimes. You're going to give up catches. I think we get so enamored by the shutdown corner. Like Pat is the closest thing to a shutdown corner in today's NFL with all the rules and considerations as possible. You're going to get stuff caught on you sometimes. You're going to give up some big plays. You're going to get got. That's what being a cornerback is all about. But by far, there is him. But the next guy, I think you can make a really good argument here, Sarah, about his value to the Broncos overall. We saw what it was like when he was not on the field for Denver defensively this season. Justin Simmons coming in second with 27% of the votes from Broncos country. Yeah, Justin Simmons, he just continues to be a, a machine out there, right? I mean, he's forcing turnovers left and right. He's the leader of that defense. The defense is so much better when he's in there. And, of course, we saw an unfortunate example of what it's like when Justin is not out there against the Miami Dolphins, right? So uh, we don't want that. We want less of that. We want to see more of Justin Simmons. I mean, you talk about the, the defense really creating a ton of turnovers during that winning streak. I mean, Justin is obviously – at the forefront of all of that. He's the guy who gets his hands on the ball the most out of anybody on this team year after year after year. So 
I mean, you want to talk about value. I mean, he's he's one of the best. I mean, he's arguably the best safety in the game. And I think you see that week in and week out, just the consistency. That's what makes like players like Pat Sertan. We talked about this in the lead up to the NFL draft. Like he, he was so good in college that he becomes boring almost. Right. And, and it's the same now in the NFL. It's like, well, he's not, he's not that good. Right. He's not making nine interceptions like Deron Bland, but the problem is he's so good. He's boring. And Justin Simmons kind of becomes that way to fans as well. It's like, one of those things that you don't know what you got till it's gone. And, and I don't, I'm not saying he's leaving. I'm not saying I think Justin Simmons is boring, but I think fans get bored of this kind of level of consistency that you see yeah. week in and week out that it's like, I need the fireworks. I need uh, a new roller coaster. I need all these new thrills and adventures. And you don't necessarily need that, right? You need consistency. And Simmons, he brings that to the table every single game. Well, and then the next the next vote was kind of close. So we had Justin at 27%. Fans also voted Alex Singleton. 24.3% of the votes here in Broncos country suggested that Alex Singleton was the team's defensive player of the year. Obviously for him, I believe it was 13 games where he had 10 or more tackles, which was a, a new record. And for him, just leading the team in tackles this season, this is a guy that plays with his hair on fire, ultra aggressive, instinctual, anywhere the football is. He is there. I could definitely see a real argument for him to be had in terms of defensive player of the year voting. But I thought that the final two names that we got in terms of votes and tallies, I thought was interesting as well. There was a tie at 2.7% between both of these guys. And it was the team's two leading sack artists there in Nick Benito and Jonathan Cooper. I felt like that was interesting considering Benito wasn't a starter, but his impact obviously was huge. We talk about led the team in TFLs and missed a couple of games due to a knee injury. That right there is also very impressive and gives me some optimism about the future of the Broncos. But we talked about it in yesterday's show in terms of Denver, maybe looking at edge rusher. I think either one of these two guys can emerge into being a Batman, as you were talking about when we were talking about the Batman Robin comparison. Yeah, I think so too. I think they got the talent. They have the athleticism. I mean, and we saw that they can finish some plays in the backfield, even saw these two combine for an assist against the Chicago bears for I don't remember if it was the only defensive touchdown last year, Cody, but one of one of the few defensive touchdowns yeah. that the Broncos had more than I can't remember. But yeah, they combined for that little uh, you know scoop and score there, and and they obviously worked well together. So and they really fit, I think, in the final category that we have as well as maybe the most improved players on the team, at least when you talk about getting opportunity and and their their ability meeting that opportunity. These guys definitely deserve a ton of recognition. May not have been. Batman in 2023, but hey, I, I mean, you might be on your way there. The Dark Knight might be rising from within the organization in terms of these two guys becoming top tier pass rushers. So I'll be fascinated to see how their development continues. As we know, it's not always a straight line up, but with these two guys, I mean, maybe you get even better than that. Maybe you're kind of progressing upwards slowly, and then maybe next year you just get that big spike. Those two guys are two of my favorites. Like I would say, like Baron Coop and and. Benito are my three favorite players to talk to inside the locker room. Like, you know, uh, Nick is a big the boys fan on Amazon. I don't know if anyone's ever seen that, but you know, he's got like he's got some intensity to him too. And like, I, you know, we talk about Batman and Robin and say like Nick Benito is gonna be like Homelander here in the next year or so. If, <laughs> you know, those who've watched the show know what I'm talking about. He's gonna be a menace for opposing quarterbacks. I like the picture that's circulating on social media right now of that one of the coldest picks from the season is when he was flexing on Patrick Mahomes. I remember that play too. Because Benito popped him and Patrick Mahomes did not like it. And, you know, there's some John back and forth. So I'm excited to see what can happen here with this young group of Broncos edge rushers going forward. But Broncos country, the other category we're going to dive deep into here is the most improved player in the eyes of Broncos country. Your votes came in. We're going to share that on today's episode, Locked on Broncos. Today's Locked On Broncos is brought to you by our friends over there at LinkedIn Jobs. And at the start of the new year, every small business owner is asking themselves, the same question. What's the one move that I can make that'll take my business to the next level here in 2024? LinkedIn Jobs knows that your success depends on the team that you surround yourself with. That's why LinkedIn Jobs has created the tools to help find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just another job board. LinkedIn has a vast network of more than a billion professionals, which makes it the best place to hire. Hiring is easy when you have that many quality candidates. So easy, in fact, that 86% of small businesses, they get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires 
versus leading competitors. So make sure that you achieve your 2024 goals with the right team member here today. LinkedIn also knows that small businesses are wearing so many hats and they may not have the time or the resources to hire. Thankfully, with LinkedIn, the process is intuitive, it's quick, and it's easy. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Today's episode is also brought to you by our friends over there at the Game Time app. If you've ever had a frustrating ticket buying experience, you know exactly how frustrating it can be to get hit with last minute hidden fees or the vantage from your seats isn't what was as advertised. Game Time, they take away all those concerns because they give you the best overall in app experience that makes your in person experience to whether you're, you know, going to a concert, a sporting event, uh, you know, whatever it may be. They make sure that your experience is top tier. So make sure you check it out there at the Game Time app. Game Time is the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase. You can see the view from your seat before you buy, so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. They have all in prices which show you your total upfront, so you know that you're getting a great deal before you check out, and you can buy tickets in seconds with just two taps. So make sure you check it out and take the guesswork out of buying tickets with the Game Time app. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. As we jump into the fourth quarter action on today's episode of Locked On Broncos, we just want to say thank you once again, Broncos Country, for tuning in making us your first listen of the day every single day. You can get this podcast for free on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast. You can listen to us, take us anywhere with you on the go. And hey, as the offseason continues, there's going to be some storylines that are coming up with this team. Sarah and myself, we're going to analyze every angle of this team from offense, defense, coaching, personnel, how you assemble and build a roster here for 2024. These are things that you can expect from us, especially as free agency creeps up on March 13th and the NFL draft, the NFL scouting combine is coming up. Obviously, the senior bowl is coming up. We'll start taking a look at a lot of different things here, and you can expect that. That's our promise to you here every single day on the Locked On Broncos podcast. We're going to finalize our voting here. Obviously, Broncos country submitting their votes, using their voice to select, I think, players who are deserving of the honor of some of the categories that we talked about, like offensive player of the year, defensive player of the year. But now we're going to get to the most improved player in 2023 who took the biggest jump from last season to 2023 i was very curious to see the votes like we mentioned over 1200 votes by broncos country 54.1 percent voted for so sir lloyd cushionberry the third who obviously we've talked about this week he's going to be a free agent for denver had his best season as a pro and now the question is will he be back in denver fans obviously recognized him as one of the most improved players overall in this category yeah, and rightfully so. I mean, I think he did have a bit of an unfair advantage of having been bad before. I mean, at least in in you know what we've seen from pro football focus grades and different people around the league analyzing offensive line play certainly better than I can and really wondering even all throughout last offseason, are the Broncos going to sign anybody? Are they going to draft anybody? Are we worried about the center position? Like it was at that level with Lloyd Cushenberry going into this year, which does give him an advantage in terms of how well he played. The gap is just too big for the other players that we're going to talk about on this list, but he really did. I mean, he went from being one of the worst graded centers in the NFL, according to pro football focus to being arguably one of the best and especially in pass protection. So he earned himself some money, made himself some hay there this past season and did well for Sean Payton and this offense, Cody, and really stabilize the position that had been shaky. The Broncos really giving up a ton of interior pressure in 2022, and, and that changed around dramatically in 2023. I think we didn't notice it at nearly as often this year with Ben Powers on the left, and then obviously Quinn Miners, who we talked about as maybe being the best player offensively on the right, but certainly Cushenberry deserving of this distinction, one of the most improved players across the NFL, I would say, this past year. And we'll see what the Broncos have in plan, you know, kind of planned and in store for him here this offseason. What trajectory are they going to go? Are they going to go younger? Are they going to go with Alex Forsyth? Are they going to re-sign Cushionberry? I think so much is contingent upon what is the vision for Denver's offense and where do they believe offensively they can improve to be better in terms of consistency and run blocking and also pass protection to get more overall production 
out of an offense that was average to below average, as Sean Payton said, in a lot of the major categories. And so I'm very curious to see what the Broncos decide to do here going forward. Second place vote, 27% voted for Jaquan McMillan, which I think this is actually it's a great vote here because we didn't really know what to expect from Jaquan. Like we talked about in the offseason, like, hey, this is a guy that could potentially start for you on the outside if you know someone's struggling. This is a guy who can come in and play outside corner. Little did we know until really the preseason. This guy's also playing inside the nickel. I mean, against the, I think it was against the Cardinals. He played inside the nickel after St. Bassey got the start, I think, in the first half. He got a sack blitzing off the nickel, which would be you know kind of a sign of things to come in the regular season. Jaquan became one of the NFL's top inside nickel defenders, not only against the pass, but also against the run. Seven tackles for a loss behind the line of scrimmage. The, that type of improvement is significant. It's worthy of praise here. I felt like that was an interesting one as well. But I, I also feel like, Sarah, there was another player that if we had to talk about who had the most dramatic improvement from year last year, from his rookie season to this year, I think it's a guy we talked about earlier that loves Homelander or loves the boys on Amazon. And I share that same sentiment with him. Yeah, Nick Benito, right? I mean, he he was certainly worthy of getting some votes for the top defensive player, a difference maker off the edge. But definitely compared to what we saw last year in his rookie year, Cody, I think you're right. 100% one of the most improved team uh, players on this team overall. I mean, Nick Benito went from, can you even throw him out there? I mean, the Broncos made the trade last year for a guy like Jacob Martin. You bring him in, it's like we need some somebody to come off the edge. Well, you had Nick Benito on the team, but he wasn't apparently ready to play. So now I think we've seen that guy that at, at Oklahoma was racking up TFLs, was racking up sacks, racking up pressures, guy who dropped to the second round because they weren't sure coming out of the draft, can he really hold up full time off the edge? He proved that he can do that, I think, at least to a degree, right? I don't think everybody was 100% pleased with the way the Broncos played off the edge in both phases as as far as run defense and pass rush but certainly Nick Benito held his own out there and dominated a few <laughs> more than a few reps as a pass rusher I mean he was really good this past season so I'm excited for the trajectory that he's on as well would love to know where where George Payton is at with him and his development I know we'll get a chance to hear from him at the combine and things so it's going to be fascinating to hear what he thinks of these young core players on his roster which I think Nick Benito has become 5.4% of voters selected P.J. Locke as one of the most improved players as well, which I think there's another valid argument. I mean, a year over year, P.J.'s been in a situation where he's just gotten better every single year and really cut his teeth on special teams. But this year, really stepped up when Denver needed him the most at safety. We talked about it on yesterday's episode of the show as well, really focusing on, hey, he's going to be a defensive free agent. Is the Bron you know is the Broncos focus on bringing him back to be the starter next to Simmons, or is he going to maybe sign with another team, which is a possibility? But five point four percent of Broncos country felt like PJ Locke was one of the most improved players in twenty twenty three. You're not going to get an argument from me. And then two point seven percent voted for Russell Wilson, which I think if we're looking at twenty twenty two, twenty twenty three, real legitimate argument that Russell Wilson also was a very very significantly improved player this past season. Absolutely. I think that's very valid. I mean, you didn't want that to have to be the case, right? But at the same time, you looked at the 2022 season when he had what 16, 19 touchdowns. I can't remember the exact number. And you come into this season where he looked kind of like the old version of Russell Wilson, at least for a lot of the year. And so it, it was definitely marked improvement in every phase as a runner, as a passer, just the accuracy on deep downfield throws, which we, we were missing that last year, uh, you know, those those connections deep downfield that we used to see all the time in Seattle. So big time improvement from Russ this past season. And hey, we have plenty of time this offseason, at least we think, you know, we don't know what's going to happen exactly or when the timing of all of these things are going to be decided. But we've got plenty of time to talk about that improvement. Do, do the Broncos believe it's sustainable? Is Russell going to be willing to come back after being benched? A lot of discussion to be unfolded about him, but certainly one of the most improved players on the team, even though you didn't necessarily expect him to be in that category. Yeah, no, it's going to be a very interesting offseason, folks. We've always said it. We even said it in the final two weeks, like, hey, buckle up. It's going to be crazy, and you're going to want to have your seatbelt on here. We'll have you covered every step of the way here on Lockdown Broncos. But that'll wrap up today's episode of the show here, wherever you get your podcasts or available on YouTube every single day, all year long, because for the true fan, there's never an offseason. For all you everydayers out there, there are some NFL executives, according to a report out there, put out by Jeremy Fowler of ESPN, 
that Russ, that a lot of executives in the NFL still believe Russell Wilson can be an effective and efficient starter in the NFL. What does this present for Denver in terms of options and opportunities if they do want to move on? We'll break that down and we'll preview the NFL Divisional Weekend on tomorrow's brand new episode of the show.